This encounter between a driver and a police officer was captured on Friday, January 20, 2023. The driver was accused of crossing a traffic light at red. A few minutes after the incident, Aaron J, not his real name, and his brother were also stopped by a different police officer for crossing a traffic light when it was red. The officer insisted on taking them to a police station nearby. Aaron's brother joined the police in their car. At the back seat were some food stuff, so Aaron had to walk to where the police officer was taking his brother to. Well, I was in the car with my brother and uh, we were chatting in the car. When we were coming, the amber light came out, but uh, because we were chatting, we couldn't notice that, so he drove through and then the policeman stopped us. And he explained that to, he explained that to us, we agree and we were talking. He said we have no other option than to drive us to the police station. I told him to sit in my car after a quick interview so that we could track his brother's car. At this point, we could not film due to the nature of the environment where his brother was taken to. But Aaron claimed the officer was given some amount of money before he let them go. He said we shouldn't do that again. So how much did he take? Oh, yes, yeah, something for transport. Something for transport. Yeah. How, much, how much for transport? I'm not the one who gave the money, so <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, but, and, boss, how much did you give him? It was like 50 cities, 100 cities, 150. I didn't count. I, didn't, I, just, I, just, I just pull out the money from the... It's, another, it's, another, it's something, to something less than, less than sure. 200. Aaron and his brother's experience as one out of many, according to some drivers. Claims of police harassment and intimidation of drivers has been rife for some time now. Even though some come out as false, some claim their experiences are true. Michael Danku, 31, as a private transport operator, he lost his license to a police officer. They stopped me and I stopped. So it was like, uh, I should give them my driver's license. So I hand it over to them. So it was like, oh, so I was like, okay, I know that's where they always stood. As I went and dropped my passengers, they come back. I couldn't find them. I couldn't get my lances. I have to go back and make a new lances. It cost me about 1,008. Amadou Aziz also narrates an ordeal his friend encountered. Some of them have this issue of um, retrieving. When, when the police have to retain the um, license, they have to play some delay tactics or some form of I should just say, like, till they bring something before they get their licenses. Yeah. Meanwhile, when they check everything, everything is excellent. You're supposed to just check the person, let the person go. But they do this to irritate you or upset you. And when you react, you, you, are, you, are, you are appointed as the villain. They put you too much pressure in the way they speak, the tone, and stuff like that, which is, is a very bad experience. From That's not my experience, so that's what my friend told me. Drivers claim that police officers often arrest them for non-existent offenses and blackmail them into parting with hefty bribes in order to avoid being hauled before court. Such unlawful demands usually spark fear in them, a situation which threatens their livelihoods. A security analyst, Adib Sani, tells me a story of a police officer confessing to him for planting narcotics in a man's car. The police actually alleged that he was assigned to a unit uh, that had gone out on an operation and had actually planted um, a drug substance on a victim. And according to him, the man appeared to be a, an imam from a mosque. And uh, he wept like a baby. Uh, he was able to galvanize the monies for them. Whilst he was handing it over to them, he was still weeping and cursing them. So the officer complained and they told him that in the end they are not going to give him what he's due. So when he got back to his base, he complained to his commander's boss. And guess what the boss said? If you can't do the work, stop it. Adib 
says such repeated behaviors have a potential of driving the police name into disrepute. These issues are real. They happen. Almost on a weekly basis, people come to me with similar uh, 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 sentiments. With what is happening, it has the potential of um, dragging the police into disrepute, which invariably would lead to a loss in confidence um, in the police. He called on the Ghana Police Service to deal with drivers who come up with false accusations like Patrick Esiedu, a bold driver who circulated a false for? audio <laughs> about the police, the police service. Like, uh, that's what they do to extort money from people, especially foreigners. It's, it's quite an unfortunate incident and I'm livid about the fact that the audio is fake information because it is a betrayer to all of those persons who have been victimized and who are looking for justice. Such persons should be dealt with rigorously and vigorously according to the law. Has the slogan, the police is our friend, lost its essence due to the increase in harassment claims. The police have the authority and are obliged to lawfully look into evidence regarding crimes and to arrest those they believe have committed crimes. But can this be done in a calm and a friendly manner? Godwin Asidiba, TV3 News, Accra.